Well, so I think we're seeing an interesting shift. Uh, a lot of our clients, even the majority of our clients, are recognizing the need and importance of cloud. So they're they're there and, and realize that they need to put a plan together to move to the cloud. They are coming to us um, asking for assistance both in developing that plan and then executing it. So you know, clients, again, they realize that it takes more to run their business than ERP and CRM. They have these other workloads that they would like to move to the cloud. They're just not sure how. So they'll come to, they're coming to us and asking to sit with them, develop what that journey would look like and, and what approach we could take to help moving those other workloads to the cloud. You know, we have specific clients that um, have legacy on-prem applications that, that they didn't think there was any chance that could run in the cloud. With applications like that, we, we lift them and shift them to Azure and you really keep the application intact as it was on-prem. So they get a lot of the benefits of moving to the cloud um, that they didn't have on-prem, such as you pay for what you use. So when we move those applications, sometimes they're only needed um, during business hours. We can actually shut those applications down and save them a lot of money. Um, they get the backup and they get the security features that are available in the cloud that a lot of times are more robust than they had on-prem. So that those are specific examples of like lift and shift migrations that we can do. We have other clients that are coming to us and they really want to take advantage of all the, the great um, native capabilities of Azure. So they may take some of those legacy applications and actually rewrite them to use things like uh, SQL paths, and web apps with inside of Azure, and we can help assist doing that as well. That's phenomenal. So are, 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 you, are, they, are they coming to you with the same kind of challenges with managing Office 365? Uh, absolutely. So the, the two biggest challenges that we see with O365, one is around the licensing. So the licensing is complicated as is. Um, a lot of times the, the types of licenses, the naming of licenses, what's included with the licenses changes and keeping up with that can be complex. So where they really engage us is I have a whole list of licenses. Can you help me figure out what, what licenses I need, what tiers of those licenses I need? And in a lot of cases, there might've been churn, employee churn within an organization and they didn't keep up. So, you know, if an employee leaves an organization, you're gonna continue to pay for that license until you go in and turn that license off. So we frequently sit with our clients, look through their users, the types of users they have, and make sure those users are aligned to the right licenses. And in a lot of cases, we can save the client quite a bit of money uh, just by doing that optimization exercise. Second, um, you know, unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of breach activity going on right now, and a lot of it's coming through email. And a lot of it's coming through email with clients that are on O365. And what we're finding is they're not taking advantage of the security features that are available in O365. And so we love to sit with them. We run what we call a secure score against their environment, and we can really identify gaps and um, uh, easy features within o O365 that they can turn on that can prevent the majority of this malicious activity. So those are those are by far two areas that clients are coming to us for right now. And we're starting to see with um, the amount of uh, associates needing to work remotely, clients are wanting to take more advantage of Teams. So in the past, maybe they had a trial of Teams or they had a couple of users on Teams. Now they're ready to go full blown into Teams and we help them either deploy it, we'll help set up telephony so they can make and receive phone calls through Teams. And in a lot of cases, we're doing training now for Teams for clients because they have deployed it, but now they deployed it to mass and they, they wanna make sure that how they're using Teams is appropriate and, um, and it'll be able to scale once they bring all their employees on. Absolutely. So, so we talked about moving workloads to the cloud. We talked about helping them manage their Office 365 environment. How does that differ, differ from managed services? What is managed services? Managed services is kind of everything else, right? So there are a lot of mundane activities that go into supporting infrastructure that a lot of times users don't even see or know about, but it's important. It's the security of servers and workstations. It's the patching of those every month when Microsoft releases updates. It's the backing all of those up. There's just a lot that goes into the care and feeding of a, of a technology environment. And so we wanna make sure we've got managed services to support our clients 
in any of those areas that they need. So whether it's managing your servers, whether it's managing your workstations or network, or whether it's things like helping you and managing your O365 like we talked about, um, we've got services for manage, managing backup and security as well. So we want to fit in wherever you, wherever the client needs it, really. And um, you know, just know that we've got a wide variety of these managed services for clients to take advantage of, and and uh, kind of uh, take some of that workload off their existing staff, so they can really focus more on growing and supporting the business. Always makes sense. It, so, so we hear a lot about Windows Virtual Desktop. Is that a component of managed services, or is that something different altogether? Uh, it, it, it's both. So there, we do have managed services available to support Windows Virtual Desktop. And what Windows Virtual Desktop, or you'll hear it termed a lot, WVD, it's a virtualized desktop that stays inside of Azure, but is accessed through your PC. And and the importance or why 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 that could be beneficial to a client is. Um, that workstation image that the client is accessing, A, can be accessed from anywhere on any device. So you can access that image through your laptop. You can access it through your phone or mobile device. You can access it through multiple workstations or desktops. Um, second, it's secured. So when it's hosted in Azure, there are a lot of security features that you can put on top of that image to make sure malicious software doesn't get installed, for example, to make sure um, employees can't add administrative accounts and things like that into the system. There, there's a wide variety of things that can be added. Where we see clients taking most advantage of w, WVD are usually regulated clients. Maybe you're in the financial or healthcare industry, certainly, and where um, clients don't want to um, manage their desktops themselves. They want to have a partner that comes in, builds these images, makes them accessible for the users, and then manages those images on a day to day, uh, you know, from a day to day frequency standpoint. Okay. Okay. Well, let's, let's, let's jump back to the very beginning. In the beginning, you said that Velocio was well known for ERP and CRM, and you spoke a little bit about, uh, again, moving things to the cloud, lift and shift and so forth. So that says hosting to me. Is that big part of your model? Oh, it's, it's, it's a very big part of our model. It's, it is the best step, the best first step for clients to move to the cloud. So what we've traditionally seen are clients wanting to take advantage of lift and shift, maybe to move that on-prem ERP or CRM system into the cloud. Then once, once, once that was done and they got comfortable with it, then they started moving, hey, can you move these other workloads into the cloud in the same lift and shift fashion? And of course we can do that. Now what we're seeing is uh, some of, like I mentioned earlier, some of those um, apps that maybe they want to rewrite or take advantage of other cloud capabilities to really differentiate their business um, is now what some of those clients that have taken those first couple steps uh, already are looking to do. For those that, that have it, that first step, the first great step is the lift and shift of maybe your ERP, your ERP environment, for example. Okay, well, so so once 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 a company's in the cloud, right? They're operating in the cloud. I, I've read a number of articles about you know Azure not being backed up past thirty days, or companies just being unsure and not having stuff inside of their walls. So yeah. what do you all do in terms of security and backup and that sort of thing? Yeah, I think around security and backup, there's two important things to know. So in Azure, so if you're talking hosting. Um, it's up to you to set up those backups. So it's up to whoever's administrating that environment, whether it's a managed services partner provider like Velocio or whether a client's doing that themselves, the onus is on them to set up those backups and make sure they're occurring and monitoring them. And then obviously you wanna do test restores to make sure the backups are viable. So inside of Azure, that's how backups work. And, and please, please take that seriously and make sure that you know, if whether your partner or you're doing it yourself, those backups are getting done, make sure they're being monitored and most importantly, make sure they're also being encrypted as well. So that's for Azure. Inside of O365, a lot of folks don't know that Microsoft doesn't have a native O365 backup solution, uh, for obviously for O365. Now, you know, not to induce panic, there's a lot of redundancy that's in place. Um, there are a lot of things available to make sure that your email, your files, stuff like that doesn't get lost, but it is not getting backed up on any kind of recurring basis. Uh, Velocio does have a tool available where we can perform um, email, 
uh, and file and teams backups for clients. So it's something that's really important to at least be asking your partner about or asking your internal IT about how are you backing um, my O365 environment up and, and, and understanding how that's occurring and when it's occurring. Okay, I can't imagine anything more important than being able to retrieve that data. Um, right, especially especially in, in this, um, <laughs> you know, malicious security environment we're, we're, we're living in today. And I'll tell you, um, you know, really, um, uh, you know, the malicious actors are taking advantage of the COVID situation. So, you know, what we're seeing a lot of are malicious COVID emails getting into an organization that either says, click here on a COVID heat map or click here on this link for more information on COVID, something along those lines, a client would click that. They'll ask for a username and password. In some cases, it'll ask you to download software. At that point, they've either now got your credentials or you've installed a malicious piece of software on your workstation. That's by far how we're seeing at least malicious activity occurring today. It's amazing, I think, how often even a, a fairly guarded, fairly knowledgeable office worker um, gets busy. They're running through their day. They're cleaning out their email and boom, they've just clicked on something that given time they probably would have talked themselves out of. For sure, for sure. And that's why, you know, taking advantage of, um, you know, some of the security features I mentioned earlier is so important because those emails in this situation would never even have gotten to that user. Right. So, mm -hmm. well, well, listen, we talked talk a lot about the, the kind of the, the operational side of it. So with all of this great software comes licensing. Now, I know that's a huge headache for most companies. Um, are there any licensing management services provided by Velocio? Yeah, as a matter of fact, we think it's one of the, the, the differentiations that Velocio brings to our clients, and it's something our clients are asking a lot of us for. And, um, you know, licensing inside of O365 or Microsoft 365 is very complex. It's, it's changing frequently. What's included in the different licensing tiers is changing. Occasionally, the pricing changes. So keeping up with that can be a challenge. And, and we love to sit with our clients, and they're asking us to sit with them and go through their licensing, understand the types of users that they have. So a let's say a, um, a mobile user that's, that's out in the field a lot that maybe just needs email on their iPad is a very different user than an executive might be at an organization. And those are two very different kinds of licenses that they would need. And so we like to understand what the different users that a client has are and make sure they have the appropriate licenses assigned. And in many cases, they're either oversubscribed or over-provisioned, meaning they, they, they have more licenses than they have users or they have too high of tier for the type of users that they are. We can save them quite a bit of money. That's awesome. Well, so I hate to challenge you like this, but Velocity is a pretty good sized company, but there's larger companies out there that deal with licensing. Companies like Ingram Micro, or Tech yeah. Data. How, how would Velocio compare to a company like that? Yeah, I, we want to be more, we want to do more with you than sell you a license, certainly, right? And, and even if you are getting those licenses through us, we, we offer that service to you as a client of ours. And that service being the license review, the license optimization one. And then secondly, the secure score assessment. So we will sit down with you. Uh, we'll, we, have, have, um, we can run a secure score assessment in your environment. It usually takes about two hours. And at the end of that, you get a very nice report out on the security posture of your environment. We provide that to you. And inside of there are different recommend recommendations and changes that you can make within your O365 environment to help better secure it. Um, to, if there's any governance requirements that you have to meet, those are all in there. And then we can help show you how to enable a lot of that stuff. And, and as well as, you know, you know, if you would like to use any of our managed services for the care and feeding of it as well, those are all options available for you. That's, that's phenomenal. So the company could come to you and say, hey, I need some help. I want you to take a look under the hood and you could give them recommendations on where they might go with licensing. Of course, it happens all the time. And, and we, we really appreciate those conversations because like I said, it, it, it can be very complex to both um, understand and also to maintain. Okay. So is that, is that I guess, it is Velocio get maybe even, uh, maybe are they a better fit when uh, the company is using, you know, an extended portfolio of Microsoft tools like ERP and CRM and so forth? Um, I, so I think we're a fit in any case, whether it's you have a couple of licenses and need help or whether you're a, an enterprise level organization and have licenses across many different types of platforms, we absolutely would, uh, you know, can help you with those. 
um, it gets a, it gets increasingly complex. So as you do move into, you know, more of the enterprise um, types of licenses, and frankly, um, it's not just the types; it's the it's the it's whether maybe you have D three sixty five licenses and O three sixty five licenses and power platform. So it can it can get complicated really quick. So in either case, I think you know we are more than happy and willing to to sit with you and work through those licensing challenges that you might have. That's great. You know. So, so I, I know this is part of business, right? But it does to a guy like me, this starts to sound fairly complex. So if I were to come to you with my company and we weren't super technical, we weren't super digital, um, how do we know when we're ready for, for this level of complexity? Is there something you guys can do to help us look at our internal environment or our company and Absolutely. understand? Absolutely. So, I mean, we've, ta we've talked about a lot here, right? We've talked about moving to cloud. We've talked about O365 and licensing. We've talked about managed services. The most important step is taking a first step. And a lot of times what that first step can be is us getting in and, and doing some type of digital maturity assessment for you. And we can make that very lightweight. It can be, you know, much more complex if you would like, but it's really look at, let's look at the posture of your business kind of where you see your business growing and how you want to use technology to do that. In some cases, it's as simple as I plan to maintain a remote workforce. What do I need to grow and give my employees flexibility in being able to do that? In some cases, it's um, I really want to use technology to differentiate my business. I want to use some of this cloud stuff to be able to do that, but I need your help figuring out what those cloud pieces and components are and helping me put that picture together of what maybe the next 12, 18, 24 months would look like. Or maybe it's, I really wanna optimize my associates. I want them focused on the business. I want them focused on growing the business. I don't want them focused on maintaining my technology and infrastructure. And I'd like to know what you, what you Velocio would suggest in terms of managed services that could help me do that. Or it can be a combination of any of those things. But, you know, I always say, you know, what's the first step in, in this, these cloud journeys? The first step is taking the first step. And that first step to me is reaching out and really um, giving us an opportunity to help understand your business, the challenge you're facing, and how we can use some of these services and technologies to help you um, um, get to where you want your business to be.